Um, everything started between June 1943 in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is a. Uh, See, I get nervous and I stop. Okay. Don't don't get nervous. Don't get You're fine. You're chill. Just. Hello. Good. Who's last day? So what's the password? Oh. The zoot suit was adapted from the London drape suit, which was a design popular popularized by the Duke of Windsor, Edward VIII, earlier in the decade. But the zoot suit didn't originate in Harlem, New York until the 1930s, and was worn particularly by young African and Latino American men. The zoot suits were loose-fitted, they perfectly fit dance halls, and were very popular with venues for socializing, dancing, and easing the economic stress because of the Great Depression. <laughs> that means nothing about the zoot suit was explicitly Mexican. So why this specific community in Los Angeles? Why were these people and their dress so significant? And why was it a symbol for rebellion? Well, let me tell you, the reason all started because of the Zoot Suit Riots. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, wool and other textiles were subject to strict rationing. The US War Production Board regulated the production of civilian clothing containing silk, wool, and other essential fabrics. Despite these wartime restrictions, many bootleg tailors in Los Angeles, New York, and elsewhere continued to make the popular Zoot Suits for Mexican Americans in LA County who wanted to separate themselves from white people and have their own cultural identity despite being American. Many people saw the zoot suits as an unpatriotic waste of resources. So some sailors and servicemen stationed near the LA beaches in 1942 decided to take the fight into their own hands and instigate what would become a racially motivated attack. The sailors ended up murdering 22-year-old Jose Guiardo Diaz and what was labeled as the Sleepy Lagoon murder, which started the suit suit riots. This not only caused racial tensions, but a nationwide mandate on zoot suits began. The zoot suits were banned because of overconsumption of materials during World War II. In LA County, even though there were regulations banning tailors from producing zoot suits, bootlegged tailors started producing their own zoot suits. That's why in a lot of western movies from the 50s and onwards, we see a lot of thugs, gangsters, or mafia men wearing a lot of zoot suits because the culture associated them and still associates them with the crime. These are the harmful stereotypes by POC face when they demand to be seen. During World War II, the U.S. required resources for the war effort. The War Production Board started rationing wool by March 1942. Restrictions on wool directly affected wool suit production. Zoot suits, specifically, were entirely made out of wool, so production was specifically prohibited. Some tailors pushed back against the government restrictions and continued making zoot suits in protest. According to George Corian, an assistant professor of administration of justice at Penn State, Mexican-American youths wearing the zoot suits were seen as un-American because they were deliberately ignoring these rationing restrictions. The shape of the zoot suit is familiar to many because of jazz greats who wore them at the time. It has a bespoke draped silhouette which serves as a symbol of culture and identity. The piece we selected is from the collection Reigning Men, Fashion and Menswear, 1715-2015 to at LACMA. The material shortage and lack of preservation of these suits makes zoot suits very hard to locate from the time period of the 1930s and early 1940s. I'm going to be taking a look at a few elements of art in this specific suit. The line is in wet. So the jacket is draped with a broad shoulder cut and the trousers have ballooned legs and a narrow hips with deeply pegged pleats. This creates an image of dandyism or this excessive refinement. And so the trousers had both belt loops and suspender buttons on them. Um, this is because the 1940s was a transition period between suspenders and belts for men. The shape, so the wool drapes quite cleanly over the body and allows for these straight pleats that we see pictured. And then the space was the main concern of um, the controversy at the time. 
and this is because it does take up a lot of space because it uses so much fabric um, it uses so much wool and takes up a lot of space billowing out outside of the body so the boys wear 16 to 20 for the age of the suit suits and the girls they never really specified the the age, but it was mostly young Latinas. Uh, they started this movement because they wanted to come out of like this stereotype for Mexicans that they were like, oh, you're poor, you need a, you only were available to buy um, the suits. They started to wear them as something emotionally and symbolic meaning for the movement as music and uh, dress. May 1943, the Venice Riot High School boys at the um, Aragon Ballroom complained that suit suits have taken over the beachfront. So the soldiers appeal at the ballroom, claiming the soldiers have been stabbed. And it's amid a crowd of 500 sail sailors and civilians attacked Mexican Americans, young people, at the exit of the dance. This is when everything started, the, the, the fighting continues until 2 a.m. Then the police arrest Mexican American youth for their own protection. So after this, it was June 3rd that approximately 50 sailors leave the naval reservoir armory with concealed weapons to revenge the attack of the coal man. Um, so they start targeting the neighborhoods near the armory and attack anyone that they can find that was wearing suit suits. And there was always, the ones that they found was young people. Also from an article I found, it's from Beatrice Griffin, 1947. The girls wear their own style of dress, consisting of longer fingertip lengths, coat, and letterman sweater, draped slacks or front, full skirt above their own brown knees. Um, they usually made up heavily with mascara, lipstick, and their favorite hairstyle was high pompadour with flower and earrings. Um, it was the same article from the California Historical Society. Also, the suit suits provided young African Americans and Mexicans youth uh, a sense of individualistic identity with their cultures and society. Gender and the suit suit have many significant points in their timeline, from when it originated in Harlem, New York, to when it made its way to the West Coast. When we researched the suit suit, what mostly came up was how Mexican men wore it during the 1940s. 1940s during World War II. In a way, wearing the suit was deemed unpatriotic as it was a sign of rebellion. Traditionally, men wore the suit suit in their teenage years well into early adulthood. A lot of them were mostly in men's clothing like men's coats, hats, and shirts. While the suit suit was popularized by working class men on the west coast, it wasn't until about the late 40s when we see the style pop up again in women's clothing. Gender roles became more refined and women wore suit suits as a projected a working class image of themselves. A woman's zoot suit consisted of a v-neck long sleeve or coat, a pleated skirt, and a hat similar to men's style. Sometime, sometimes they would even stick to wearing loose pants or oversized jackets. Many men and women who wore zoot suits referred to themselves as pachuca, pachucas and pachucos. These names originated from Mexican-American generations of rebellion against culture. These sudden gender norm changes also caused a distress amongst the families of young women according to Catherine S. Ramirez. In their book, The Women in the Zoot Suit, Gender, Nationalism, and Cultural Politics of Memory. Many people saw the Zoot Suit as a degradation of traditional Mexican cultural values, and it was well associated with juvenile delinquency for quite some time. However, according to Ramirez, La Pachuca remained on the sidelines of Chicano narratives of resistance and group identity. It was symbolic to change. It becomes clear that gender, age, and more predominantly race and ethnicity are encompassed through the symbolic representation of the Zoot Suit. During the Zoot Suit riots, the historical Zoot Suit evolved to become a symbol for Amer Mexican Americans and claiming style over their own independent bodies, while emphasizing the racial discrimination that was associated with the suit, and most importantly, cultural resistance and affirmation against white privileged values. Being pressured into assimilation of American culture, the Zoot Suit inherently became a gateway to defy such assimilation, which became a public threat to the white American social systems. Being a marginalized minority group, Mexican-American youth sought the opportunity to adapt the suit to claim sovereignty over their own Mexican heritage and values during times when American patriotism was heavily glorified. And those opposing the war efforts were deemed as unpatriotic and a danger to the social standards of what it means to be American. Living in a world where one is ashamed of their ethnic culture and traditions, the Pachucos utilized the image of the Zoot Suit to protest and resist against the racial tensions enforced by their white counterparts. Despite the violent acts taken against targeted Mexican-American youth endorsing the Zoot Suit 
Its representational significance continued to leave a lasting impression on American fashion and history. Though the suit was stereotyped to be associated with crime, violence, and juvenile delinquency, these stereotypes stem from racist allegations that established a shift in the way the person wearing the suit suit is seen through the social lens. The suit suit has indeed arrived to represent a symbol of Mexican identity within a white, Western-dominated society that has allowed the Mexican-American community and other Latino-Latina communities to reclaim independence and governance over their own bodies against the odds of racial discrimination, insensitive stereotypes, and social hierarchy. In contemporary times, devastation among the affected communities continues as the Zoot Suit ban in Los Angeles, California remains since the riots of 1942. Probably, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that house, they got arrested because they were a drug house. It was like last year in the summer. <laughs> <laughs>